namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Venerable monks and nuns, and dear lay Upasak and Upasikas, uh, thank you again for inviting me um, for the second time uh, in this U.S. Dhamma series talk. Uh, so today I will be speaking about uh, one of the stories that I find very interesting, uh, intriguing actually, uh, uh, in my Buddhist studies because the um, stories generally play a larger role in Buddhist uh, belief and practice, an expansion of Buddhism locally and globally. Whether it was the stories of the Gautama Buddha or his great saintly disciples or Arahantas, or the stories of the great individual and throughout the Buddhist histories, the stories always inspires us uh, to walk uh, in the path of the Buddha. And today, uh, in this talk, uh, I will be sharing one of such stories, the stories of the Sivali and his moral representations, his myths, legends, and his uh, saintly uh, trajectories and his spiritual background based on the, the Pali uh, sources or Pali canon. Uh, Shibali was one of the earliest disciples of the Buddha, who, uh, as an idealized saint, by saint I mean the Arahant, occupies an exceptional position in the Pali Buddhist biographical literature. Uh, in contemporary Theravada Buddhists of South and Southeast Asia, uh, Shibali is transformed into uh, the local deity who brings a good luck, wealth, and fortune, which I call the living saint, even though Shibli has gone for a long time ago. On the other hand, uh, people in South Asia, uh, especially Bengali-speaking Buddhists in Bangladesh and Kolkata, India, worship civilly for material prosperity. And an analysis of the Buddhist biographical texts uh, demonstrate that the story of the Buddha and his great disciples contain uh, obvious truth, such as the factual stories, the legendary myths, historical truth, and biographical reality. In her introduction to the biography in the Buddhist traditions, published in 2010, Ulrich Rosler writes, and I quote, Life stories are only if there are us a reason to tell them. In religious contexts, it is usually an exceptional person or saint or spiritual heroes whose story is considered worthy of being rendered and serving to instruct and edify the audience. Rosler remarks resonate with the story of Shibuli. Indeed, the Shibuli's biographical writing speak of an exceptional life of a person, and it is told and retold, written and rewritten number of times, because it teaches moral lesson, mythical history, holds spiritual truth and religious values. Conceptualizing Sivali as an imaginative Buddhist saint, here uh, by saint I mean the Arahans, Arahan Sivali is embedded in the Indian religious narrative context and based on the Pali Nikaya, Atthakatha narratives, and South Asian vernacular religious biographies. In this talk, I will reconstruct the fragmented stories of Sivali from, his, uh, from historical and mythical context, arguing that 
Buddhist narratives or Buddhist storytelling hardly separate from myths and history. As a mythical, powerful, and fully liberated, uh, liberated person and ideal man, uh, Shibuya remains a very popular in contemporary wall of Theravada in South and Southeast Asia, as he was once in India. In almost every Buddhist house in South Asia, the pictures of Shibuya are kept for daily Shibuya worship. And Buddhist anthropologists, such as Stanley Tambaya and John Strong notes that synchronized with indigenous belief and sacredness of saint and saint worship, many protective amulets of shivali and cultic practice are widely developed for richness and auspicious living in modern Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia. On the other hand, contemporary Theravada Buddhists of Bangladesh have developed a distinctive cultic rituals towards the Shivali called Shivali Puja. As an idealized saint, Shivali occupies an important place in Pali Buddhist biographical literature, in which he was declared as the one of the the one foremost in receiving gifts. Theravada vernacular biographies exaggerate his stories, describing that from the time of his conception, he is endowed with many extraordinary qualities and phenomenal events are said to have occurred prior to and post bath period in his kingdom. Buddhism proposes to the idea that every non-enlightened individual, I mean the non-Arahan people, is subject of transmigration through repeated births and endless death in the long journey of the samsara. But the arahans are believed to have destroyed the future rebirth and are no longer subject to rebirth. Despite doctrinal theory that suggests us, Shivali as an arahan who is no longer in this world cannot be communicated with the people. He is still being worshipped by many and great devotion is directed towards him. What makes him to be alive, though he is already dead more than 2,000 years ago? Unlike Venerable Sariputta and Mongoliana, the right and left hand disciples of the Buddha and the best known arahans in the Buddhist saint community in India in the time of the Buddha and also even now, Yet, Buddhists in Thailand, Laos, Burma, and Bangladesh pay more respect to Shivali. The obvious question is why? Who is this Shivali as an individual, as a saint in the Theravada world of religiosity? How could we study and make sense of the presentness of Shivali? How do we study the fragmented body of narratives of Shivali that constantly shifting the past within the past and its application to the present. Because Shibali's story sometimes, especially in the Jatakas, is moving from present to past, occasionally even the uh, future prediction also. Let me briefly summarize the legendary story of Shibali. In the time of the Buddha, the Shibali, the historical Shibali was born into the righteous family, a royal family. His father was a Dharmic king named Mahali. After a long period of waiting, a queen, Supavasa, the Shivali's mother, conceived him. The queen had a great pains and difficulty due to delayed delivery and suffered in intense pains for seven years and seven days. This unborn child, nonetheless, brought a great fortune to the kingdom, and in a short time, the entire kingdom became prosperous. As there was no sign of his delivery on behalf of the queen, the king went to the Buddha for seeking blessing for the unborn child. The Buddha blessed the queen by saying, May Supubhasa, the daughter of Kulia clan, free from danger and sorrow, may you give a birth to a healthy son, a healthy son in safety. As these blessing words were being uttered, the queen gave 
a healthy son and hence named the Prince Sivali. On account of this great blessing and respect, the royal family invited the Buddha and his monks for a meal at the palace for seven days. When Shibli became adult and mature enough to understand the Dhamma, he took the monastic ideals and attained our sainthood or our hardship. While his head was being shaved off, after attaining arahanship, his son established himself as one of the famous and leading arahans. He was the foremost among the recipients of gifts. And this is the simplest version of the story of Shivali. However, there are much more to the story. The question is, or rather are, how do we study when we study story, especially the Buddhist storytelling? Buddhist storytelling is complex with so many layers, past, present, future, doctrinal theory, and history. Shivali's story is hard to tell. Forget about studying unless you are simply, uh, unless you are satisfied with simply story of Shivali. As a narrative genre, the Shivali story can be best described and located within the discourse of mythological biography and historical biography, and both are infused one another. Mythological biography refers to the mythical aspect of Shivali in a distant past, while the historical biography refers to the historical Shivali who had appeared and lived more than 2,600 years ago in India. Like the other narrative or stories of the Buddha's disciples, the Shivali story hardly separate from the, pre uh, the, the present from the remote past or vice versa. Thus, the Shivali and the Shivali Pali hagiography commences with the present event, especially in the Jataka, and then appropriately relates to the uh, in the past uh, to the past event. For the Buddha's story and all great disciples in this respect, it seems the past is present and present is past. The heart of the Buddha's belief, practice, and continuity of traditional Buddhism largely depends on the sacredness religious biography. In fact, the biographical narrations of an extraordinary individual life such as an, an Arahant, has been the long-standing religious practices in the Theravada Buddhism. In the Buddhist narrative thoughts, the sacred religious biography and narrative stories mediate between the ideal and the real world for reaffirming their religious faith and continuity of religious practice. In stressing the importance of the study of the biographical genre, Within the Buddhist religious biography, uh, Julian Schuber in 1997 in her books or edited books uh, writes that, and I quote, the mythic and symbolic qualities of the sacred biographies often make for a good stories to tell, unquote. But these stories also have a deductive value because they illustrate exemplary moral practice and religious biographies mediate between the ideal and the real and the conceptual, sorry, conceptual and the pragmatic. In the Theravada biographical uh, corpus, thus, the Shivuli life is associated with legend, doctrinal theory, such as karma, nirvana, and devotional ritualism developed during the course of the development of, of Buddhism in South, Southeast Asia. In such a case, the study of Shivali and his spiritual authority play a central role as an inspirational exemplar and model for idealized religious society in the Theravada religious society. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's hmm, okay. So I'm gonna stop now because I have another event in in two minutes. So, uh, is someone there? Okay, um, Bante can 
Thank you so much for this Dhamma talk. Um, would you like to conclude with a formal uh, blessing to all the, the people? Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I haven't, I was, you know, because I haven't had even uh, here in Philadelphia in the US. Uh, maybe I'll continue next time I have. Uh, right. Maybe yeah. another talk. So, but anyway, so I'm going to conclude now. Uh, I'm sending uh, an, all the all the blessing to the people who are listening. Um, may you acquire the merits by listening to this Dharma talk. Babatu samba mangalang dakanto samba devata. Sambha Buddha Nubhavena, Sambha Dhamma Nubhavena, Sambha Sangha Nubhavena, Sodha Sodhi Bhavantu Te. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.